Thank you and welcome to the CMC Markets webinar with me, David Madden, Market Analyst at CMC Markets at, on Monday the 24th of July. The time uh, is exactly 12.15 and as always with our webinars we will go through the process of showing you the risk warning slides uh, beforehand. It will only take uh, about 30-40 seconds and uh, from, from that point we will then uh, we will then carry on with the actual webinar itself. I will just get that out of the way for the month now. I'll just leave the risk warning there on the screen in front of you if you just have a, a, a quick read over that. Uh, it essentially covers us saying that this is just commentary of what's going on and this is strictly not advice. And that right there is the last of the actual web, uh, risk mornings itself. So let us carry on with the actual webinar itself. Thank you for joining me. I'm Dave Madden of CMC Markets. Um, we have to do the usual kind of rundown whereby we discuss what has been going on in, in the financial markets uh, in the past uh, in the past number of hours of, of uh, morning trading. What we've seen in terms of news flows out over the last uh, the last few hours. A continuation of the sell-off that we witnessed uh, in, in global equity markets on Friday has continued and spilled over into today's Monday session. Some of the big news out of the Eurozone, uh, out, of, out of continental Europe, has been that a number of car makers, BMW, Daimler and Volkswagen, big German car makers, have all had, have, have been under, under pressure this morning after the EU antitrust, for, uh, bis, uh, antitrust Authority is investigating the car makers that they're having some sort of a cartel or a collusion among themselves in relation to diesel emissions, in relation to te technology being used, and also the price of supplier uh, suppliers. And while that is in play, we're seeing a major sell-off, a large sell-off in the car maker stocks, and also that is going to add it to the existing uh, bearish sentiment that has already that has already engulfed. Uh, continental Europe from the back of last week, whereby the euro has been relatively strong. Uh, we're currently trading at 116.50 on the euro versus the US dollar. The strength in the euro has been brought about because traders believe that Mario Draghi and the European Central Bank in the next few months, could be August, could be September, could be some point in the late autumn, will look to at least discuss the possibility of trimming the ECB's monthly bond buying scheme. Uh, and because of that, what we've seen is we've seen a pushing head in the euro, and um, and the and the consequence of that is that should we see tapering even be talked about down the line, that's encouraging traders to get out of eurozone equities. So it really is a double family. All on, if a stimulus package is being removed, uh, if the perception is that the the perception is that the, the, the companies aren't go, that are in the eurozone, which have benefited from the stimulus package, won't won't be as profitable as they once were. And at the same time, it's a double whammy because the single currency is much much stronger. So if you're outside the eurozone, it becomes more expensive to purchase eurozone equities. That's been basically the kind of the large news. Uh, we've also had a trading update from from Ryanair. This also a trading update from Ryanair this morning. Profits are looking healthy, but the airline did talk about having to potentially cut costs of, of airfares even further, uh, which is because due to competition intensity. Now, which is good for the consumer, but it's bad for the shareholders. So we're also seeing a sell-off in uh, airline stocks here in Europe this morning as well. In terms of economic indicators from this morning, we've had French, German and Eurozone uh, flash uh, P P PMI numbers across uh, manufacturing and sale and services big services <coughs> excuse me this morning the general theme across the reports has been that they're that they're still in growth but the growth rate is slowing down and on top of that most of the reports came in below expectations we also had the IMF over the weekend cut their global their, their growth forecast for the United States and also the United Kingdom but conversely, they've actually upped their, upped their um, growth rate for the eurozone. So the timing wasn't as, uh, absolutely wasn't perfect for the IMF when they stated that the eurozone 
well, which uh, will grow this year. And just just to say, morning Monday morning coming out, we had some uh, signs that the service sector and the manuf- manufacturing sector in continental Europe is actually uh, slowing down, and it's the lowest level it's been at for a number of months. They've been the big stories, what we've covered in um, in the last say, 24 hours, 48 hours. But if you just take a look ahead, what we what we can actually expect uh, for the remainder of the actual week itself. So if you go to the CMC Markets website and actually pull up uh, on the news and analysis section, uh, you know I'm sure you all know where it is because if you found this webinar under the learn section, the news and analysis section is, is where our um, myself and the other analysts our news and articles gets posted. If you scroll over here, looking by judging by the filter section. What we could see here by the filter section is the weekly outlook. And under the weekly outlook, we can see here a weekly earnings calendar, week commencing on the 24th of July. Gives a breakdown of what are the major, uh, uh, both economic and also corporate stories of the week uh, in front of us. So in terms of corporate stories, uh, this week we have, some big, we have some big earners coming out from the United States um, in terms of tech stocks. Tonight, after the closing bell, we have, we have uh, Alphabet, who are the owners of Google. Uh, on Wednesday, we have the up- update from Facebook, and on Thursday, we have an update um, from Amazon. Uh, in terms of, uh, on, also on Wednesday, what we have is the UK preliminary second quarter GDP. Now, some of the uh, some of the uh, figures out of the UK we've seen over the last number of months have shown that a reasonable pickup uh, in economic activity out of the UK, but it's obviously going to be kit traders, particularly seeing as the pound has been doing, broadly speaking, well against, against the US dollar in the last few weeks. Pit traders who were looking at actually you're looking at the pound sterling, particularly against the US dollar, will certainly be keeping an eye out for that. That's coming out on Wednesday. Uh, also, just looking ahead through, through the, the breakdown here now, we also have, uh, of course, uh, we have some updates from a couple of UK banks uh, at the back end of the week. We have Lloyd's and we also have Barclays Bank uh, coming out during the week. Uh, not, not to mention a raft of US economic indicators. There's a breakdown here of all the companies that are listed. Which have reported figures, quite an extensive list. Uh, but if you do, if you're interested in trading single stocks, it is certainly worth worth uh, scrolling down all the way through and finding out which precise companies are posting their fit their figures, both covering UK companies and also US companies. In terms of economic indicators, what to look out for, and where can we find it? If you want the more detailed ones, under the market pulse tab here, fourth one down, economic market calendar. I'll just widen this out. And you can see here, it gives a breakdown of what we can expect uh, each and every single day. We'll have the, the previous report, the forecast, and once the numbers are actually out, we then actually have the actual on top of that as well. So as you can see here, got a, quite a bit of housing data and retail sales data uh, coming out of the United States tomorrow. And we also and uh, turning our attention to Wednesday. As always, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, we have the preliminary second quarter GDP figures coming out from the UK. Wednesday morning at half nine. As you do every single Wednesday, we have the um, oil inventory figures from the Energy Information Agency coming out at um, half three London time on Wednesday. And we also have an update from the Federal Reserve. I didn't go into too much detail, I kind of intentionally didn't, didn't kind of talk about the Federal Reserve, the FOMC, uh, when I was doing the kind of rundown on the actual uh, top, top of the, the, the webinar. Just because it's a July meeting, there's very much not really really to be anticipated, and it's probably probably it's, it's obviously worth paying, keeping keep, keeping an eye on. But in terms of actual change um, of interest rates or change of actual uh, uh, language used from the actual statement itself, is very very unlikely. Uh, the Fed of Reserve uh, talk about wanting to tighten their monetary policy as time goes on, but by the looks of it. Given some of the given the inflation rate in the UK in the US and some of the some of the retail sales numbers on top of that in the US, traders don't really believe we're going to see another rate rise out of the, the Federal Reserve. It's still they're very much undecided. Uh, there, there was some there was there was some concern we could see a rate hike at the back end of 2017, but in light of the recent inflation and retail sales numbers from the US, uh, that is looking less and less likely. Keep an eye on how the US dollar is performing as well. The US, the US dollar is uh, broadly speaking pushing lower. That would also indicate that traders aren't ex- currency traders aren't expecting 
a rate rise from the Fed uh, at the back of this year. Or the Earth chances are it's very, very looking very very unlikely. Scrolling through here, uh, looking across on Thursday, uh, coming up we have jobless claims out of the US as we do every single Thursday. And finally, turning our attention to Friday, we got we got some CPI numbers out of Japan, employment numbers coming out of Japan. Uh, we also have some house prices coming out of the UK. Uh, we also have the regarding the US GDP uh, second quarter GDP estimate. This is going to be a big indicator of what the Fed may or may not do in terms of both tightening their interest rate, raising interest rates towards the back end of the year, and or are they going to begin? The process of tapering down or winding down the number of assets they have on their balance sheet that's coming out that update from the federal from the united states is coming out on friday now scrolling through the markets uh as, as starting off with the FTSE 100 let's have a look at the uh how the, the FTSE has performed uh the answer is not very well um taking a look at it here on a four hourly chart we can see the major sell-off that we had uh, at the back end of last week it's still in kind of in continuation. We're down about 100. We're down over 1% on today's trading session, and we're back below what was acting as resistance on while we're going up and became support. We're back now below 7,391. Uh, we're about 10 or 15 points below that. As you can see here, negative momentum is on the increase, and while we remain south of 7,391, the outlook is going to continue to be bearish for the FTSE 100. The next level to watch out for the downside is going to be the support from the 26th of June at 7,295. But should we see any pushes higher in the FTSE, in the FTSE 100, we could we, the the first uh, hurdle for uh, hurdle for bulls to come over uh, will be 7,439, and then we're looking towards this region of 7,500. The outlook and the uh, the outlook and again almost even even the, the chart shape and and uh, and movements we've seen across all Euro European equity markets is broadly similar and this is the, what we're seeing here on the Germany 30 the DAX is a good example. This is the Friday sell-off here breaking through breaking below the 100-day moving average which is previously providing support and now we're seeing here is a decisive break below that. We're now trading at uh, 12,186 on the DAX. So we're in not too far away. We're, we're, we're eyeing up the uh, the twelve thousand mark for the for the DAX. Should he move south of twelve thousand, the two hundred day moving average at eleven thousand eight hundred and nine will be the next level to keep an eye out for. Eddie moves higher in the DAX, the first kind of port to call and kind of resistance to kind of any kind of rallies we do see is going to be back at this this, this region here. The 100-day moving average, which is previously acting as support when the, in, in mid-July when the market was, was north of it, at 12,424. And then if you move north of that again, traders will then be looking out for the 12,511 region. And then, of course, the 50-day moving average, which acts as resistance to the rally we saw in the middle of the month, at the middle of the month and that is a, a region of 12,618. It's a very similar looking chart and a very similar situation uh, looking over in over in France. The France 40 uh, similarly broke through the 100-day moving average to the downside. So we're testing the support here from late June, early, which is also early late June, early July. We're actually south of that at the moment. Taking a closer look on a four-hourly chart, we can see here that this previous support level from late June and also from early July has actually not been broken through at 5,111. We've traded back north of it again, but this is going to be a, a bit. This could easily be a turning point. Whether we move south of it again, that 5,111 could become a resistance point, and then we'd be looking towards 5,000 for the downside. But should we hold above 5,111, traders will then be looking towards the kind of 5,200. 5,240 region uh, for any rallies that we do see. But taking a bit, of a bit of a bit of a step back and looking at it on a daily chart, we can see that while the market was grinding higher here in and the 100-day moving average was broadly acting as support, we can see the momentum was positive and positive momentum was actually increasing. Now we've seen a sharp decline in that and actually swing to negative momentum. So while we, while we remain in negative momentum. The outlook is likely to be negative 
for the France 40. So if we take a look now at the Eurozone 50, the Eurostox 50 market, very, very similar situation indeed. Uh, whereby the market was gaining support from the 100-day moving average. It dipped below it, the 100-day moving average at this price here, 3,515. Then became the, the resistance to any rallies. It couldn't uh, hold it to sustain anymore as of Friday. Broke well below it. Did manage to hold on to, to, some, some, to the support in this area here at 5,335, which we're just north of by about 10 or 15 points in this region. Once again, this price here, 3,435, is going to be a bit of a turning point. The markets have been broadly pushing lower since late May. The euro is quite strong. Next month, we have Mario Draghi speaking at Jackson Hole. At the Jackson Hole Symposium three years ago, that's when Mr. Draghi laid the foundation and the groundwork for the European Central Bank talking about going down the route of a bond buying scheme. And now traders are speculating three years on. August 2017, Mr. Draghi could begin to lay the foundations for okay. talk about tapering that very bond that, that bond buying scheme. Now, even though we've had a great run in equity markets for 2017, we are seeing that the chart is showing us that we are seeing a, 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 a correction here, and traders are going to be wondering: Is this correction just going to be a dip before the next move higher, or given that we've broken through some significant levels? Could we move lower? The chart in the, in the last couple of months is telling us that we're, 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 we're pushing south. The recent uh, dip to negative momentum here would also be something to watch out for for Eurozone equities. Now, turning our attention to the US indices, which are in a better shape. Not too long ago, they're at record highs, and they've, even though they have moved lower, uh, they're nowhere near as uh, no, they nowhere near had the sell-off that was witnessed uh, in over here in Europe. Um, bearing in mind, obviously, the updates in the Federal Reserve on Wednesday and the GDP numbers coming out of the U.S. on Friday are also going to be very much in play for what's going on in relation to the U.S. equity markets, not to mention the plethora of companies that are reporting their figures uh, in the next few days and weeks. It still appears to be in quite a solid uptrend. The, the, the U.S. 30 cash, the Dow Jones, buying the pullbacks has been the kind of popular strategy uh, in the last number, number of weeks and months. As we can see here, we just narrowly swung into negative momentum, uh, which is not something to be slightly concerned about. So we could see a larger than expected pullback. So we're currently trading at 21,556 on the US 30. Levels to watch out for to the downside, this support price here at 21,468, and then below that, 21,000 itself. And then tra traders, should we see an even deeper retracement, we could pull, pull all the way back to the 50-day moving average at 21,000, just just south of 21,300. Obviously, the upside target is going to be looking towards the, the recent record all-time high, which is posted not that long ago at 21,683, and then looking beyond that, it'll be looking towards. Apologise, it was 21,687. Sorry, 83 was all-time high. We'll be looking towards the uh, 21,700, 21,800. Uh, and then eventually 22,000 for the Dow to the upside. Uh, now turning our attention over to the NASDAQ 100. Similar situation here. Gone on to print record highs only last week. Have seen a bit of a pullback given that we've got what's, what's been going on in Europe. It isn't entirely surprising, but the momentum is but the overall picture for, for the Dow is still looking fairly positive, especially compared to what's going on here in Europe. Levels you're watching out for, uh, should we see pullbacks? The support year at, at uh, 20, uh, 2,460, 2,450, and 2,440. These are all areas you should be watching out for if you are looking to potentially, if, in terms of if you do see a bit of a pullback, seeing as what's going on over in Europe, and seeing as the, the positive momentum here is still very much in positive territory, but notice that it is that the, the rate of positive momentum is declining. So we are going on. So it's effectively telling us this could be a sign that the market has been moving higher, but it's not moving higher at a slower rate. And who knows, that could pause and we could just, just ramp up in terms of momentum. But it, it can often be the case whereby you, you see positive momentum slowing down could be a sign 
of a further retracement. And that's why I discussed potential levels to watch out for should we see pullback. So 2,460, 2,450 and 2,440. Levels to watch out for to the upside. We look at the big psychological numbers of 20, 2,480, 2,490 and 2,500 itself. Turning attention now to the NASDAQ 100. Like I mentioned, we have a number of tech stocks uh, reporting in the next number of days. So keep an eye on those. Not too dissimilar to what we've seen in other American indices, whereby they only last week printed all time highs and we had a bit of a sell off on Friday. Edging a bit lower, um, the New York Open is in just under two hours and we do, we do appear to be edging a bit lower on that front. Similar as well, whereby as the market was going, was, was pushing higher and, and as we now know, would not to print a new record high, but the positive momentum was increasing all the time. We have seen a bit of a cooling in the, in the, in the growth rate of positive momentum. And should that continue to cool off, we could see pullbacks. And this is what, what, this is what we're looking out for in terms of levels to keep, keep an eye on. So if you take a look here at 5,897, 5,848, and, if, and 5,800 itself. And if you see quite a large retracement, it could even pull all the way back to the 50 day moving average at 5,758. And then, of course, we were looking towards north of 5,900. Uh, and then, of course, towards 6,000 in terms of upside targets for the NASDAQ 100. Turning attention now to the global commodities markets, gold has benefited greatly. For number one, the, US dot, the weak US dollar, and number two, the sell-off in equities. It's a classic, both a flight to quality uh, in terms of getting out of equities, which are deemed to be higher risk assets, and getting into getting into um, good old traditional, what's deemed to be safe as assets such as gold, but also seeing as gold is traded in US dollars, like all commodities, because it's, it's, it's the global uh, currency reserve, reserve currency. Uh, we are seeing uh, gold getting a benefit from that as well. It's very encouraging to see that gold uh, is took out. Well, last week took out the 200-day moving average and moved north of it, which is at 12:30. It's now even trading north of both the 50-day moving average and the 100-day moving average, which have been sort of in consolidation around here. And when you see the moving averages kind of crossing over each other and broadly speaking trading kind of on top of each other, it's usually a sign that the market is a bit indecisive of where to go next. But as we can see, ever so slightly. We can see the 50-day moving average dips slightly below the 100, but it does now appear to be turning higher and <clears throat> gaining ground on the 100-day moving average. So that leg up that we saw uh, on Friday and also this morning is kind of separating the two moving averages. Adding to that, notice how we see a nice solid increase in positive momentum. So when, when you see prices hitting, in this case, multi-week highs and multi-session highs and multi-week highs, and you see positive momentum increasing, it's a sign that, 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 that the positive momentum confirms that they, uh, they move higher in price. When you see a divergence between the two, when prices are going higher but positive momentum is declining or, or in negative, that's when you be kind of, you could be, that could be a, a, an early warning signal that the market is about to turn over on itself or at the very least have some sort of retracement. Should we see uh, pullbacks in, the, in gold, we could see fall back to the to 100 day, 50 day moving average which comes into play uh, just around 1240, 48, 40, 40, 47, 48. Below that again, we'd be looking towards the 200-day moving average at 1230. And this 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 um, this level to watch out for to the upside will be 1260, which is the uh, which is the resistance uh, for the move higher 1258 rather uh, in late June. This uh, line here is a trend line I drew, which connects the uh, the September 2016 low. With the low here that we saw, uh, that the pullback that we saw here in May, it broke through very decisively here, and should we look to move beyond 1260, that trend line would then come into play in around the kind of 1265 region. So, should we take out 1265, we would then look towards the resistance here at 1280 on gold. Just turning your attention now to what's going on in the silver market. Uh, the two markets between gold and silver are fairly well connected, so the moves you can see in one are often reasonably well replicated in the moves in the other. As we can see here, 
similar similar uh, wider move whereby the, the the bullion market the silver market and gold has been pushing higher around at the same time positive momentum positive momentum is increasing it also also something you um you can be more confident uh, that, that 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 the upward move is going to last while the positive momentum is increasing uh, the big level to watch out for to the upside first one is going to be the 50 day moving average at 16 spot 69 act as, as a bit of a resistance point here or the, or the move part that we did see actually kind of by the looks of it uh ran out of steam even before it got to the, to the 50 day moving average so that's going to be an area to watch out for if you take out 16.69 we'll then be looking towards 16.90 uh which is that which is the high of this period here and then beyond that again we then be looking towards the well for the, once again a convergence between the one or day and, and the turn moving average which comes into play in around the 17 spot 15 region any moves lower in silver could find support could find support in the 16 dollars region and then also in the 16 spot 61 region that is the silver market uh, let's turn our attention now to the always interesting always very exciting always very volatile uh, energy market uh, bearing in mind today we have a meeting between the opec members and the non-opec members to discuss uh, what's, what what to do in relation to the to the coordinated production cut that was announced at the back end of May uh, May this year, and this is the actual day that the actual coordinated uh, production cut was actually announced. And as you can see, oil has dropped off considerably since then. It's uh, from from this point here, from before the meeting to now, oil is down around 10 or 11 percent. So it's clearly been unsuccessful from OPEC and the non-OPEC uh, point of view. Subjects that are for discussion include actually getting other members to adhere to the actual production cut itself. Nigeria and Libya have been exempt uh, from the actual production cut because of their own personal circumstances. And there's talk that both of those countries are going to be asked to comply with that. But given that even countries like Saudi Arabia uh, increased their production um, uh, this month, or that speculation that, that there was one energy agency that speculated that, that Saudi Arabia would increase would have increased their output this month. People or traders are wondering how much confidence do they actually have in OPEC's ability to influence the price of oil, seeing as some countries, even like uh, Ecuador, just go off and actually kind of break ranks and actually go ahead and ramp up production anyways. And countries like Iran, sorry, apologies, countries like Libya and Nigeria are also in, uh, have a bit are exempt from it, so people are kind of wondering actually how really are our intervention uh, are actually OPEC, or is this another meeting to talk about potentially doing some alterations in the rise in the hope of actually just pu pushing up the price. But if you, the kind of big picture has been very much to the downside over the last number of months. Now that we that the, the uh, this move here, this hot move here higher did t did take out the recent high here. What we're seeing on this front here. Uh, from the low of, of late June uh, to collecting the low of uh, of um, mid to early July could very well be the beginning of another kind of upward move. And should we should that be the case? Looking at the at the uh, Brent oil chart, we're pretty much trading right at the moment at forty eight dollars and forty eight cent, which is pretty much just shy of the fifty day moving average. We traded above it a couple of occasions last week, but didn't manage to hold on to the, to those levels. So should we reclaim the 50-day moving average at in around $49 a barrel, we then be looking towards the psychologically important 50 bucks a barrel for Brent. And then beyond that, we'll be looking towards the 100-day moving average at $50.52. And then, of course, we get the more important of the, of the moving averages, the 200-day moving averages at $51.62. We have seen a small decline in positive momentum. So the oil market itself has been fairly volatile, but... The price over the last number of weeks has been pointing higher, so we could see a push higher, especially on a day like today when you do have OPEC actually and non-OPEC OPEC members getting together to discuss what to do with their actual price with with, with their um, production cut. Uh, so any kind of moves lower uh, in in the price of oil could find support in around this price this this price here of of, um, of forty seven dollars and then below that forty six dollars. So that is looking at Brent. It's going to be a very, very similar looking chart for WTI. Mm. 
Same restoration that um, it's been pushing high over the last number of weeks. The high in July took out took out the high that was very that was created at the very beginning of July. So this could well be the beginning of a, another kind of pushing higher for the price of WTI. The, the first level is going to need, need to overcome is a 50-day moving average of $46.40. Beyond that, we'll then be looking toward this price here, the high of, the, of July, which comes into play at $47.54. And then we're we'll looking toward this, this, this price action here, of this, this level here of $48.23, and then $49.17 for the 200-day moving average. If we do see any kind of pullbacks in the price of WTI, we we'll then be looking towards $44.93, and then below that, $43.56. Turning our attention now to what's going on in the currency markets. Uh, run through a few currencies now, I'm a, and uh, the euro has had a certainly a very good run over the last number of weeks and months. Trading north, uh, well north of 116, even eyeing of 117, the single currency is, is, has, has recently been at a two-year high versus the US dollar. And while the market is going, going on printing those multi-year highs, the outlook is going to remain bullish for that particular currency, for the euro versus the euro dollar. As you can see here, the price is, is moving up in a very clear and concise upward trend. We can see here that, that, the, uh, that the positive momentum is on the rise as well, so you can be more confident, not, but not guaranteed, but more confident that the upward trend is going to last. Buying on the dips has been a very popular strategy in the last number of months for, for the euro versus the US dollar. So should we see any kind of pullbacks in the currency pair, we could, we could be looking at support in around the kind of 116 region. Uh, and then, of course, 117 is going to be the next level to watch out for in terms of price action. So should we see any kind of moves lower in the euro versus the US dollar, the 116.20 region, 116, 116 itself, and then this high here of 115.80. These are areas you should, you should, you should you can, uh, be keeping an eye out should we see pullbacks in the currency pair. And then, of course, you're looking towards taking out the matching the all time the recent high of 116.82 and then beyond that 117 and 118 to the upside for the euro versus the US dollar and turning on our attention now over to the pound versus the US dollar bearing in mind it's been a bit of a, bit of a tough time for the US dollar the last number of weeks we have seen kind of uh, setting pressure on the greenback like I mentioned traders don't really believe that, that the Federal Reserve are serious about raising rates again in 2017. And for that reason, we are seeing a bit of a, a pullback in the US dollar. Not to mention the fact that Mr. Trump, the President of the United States of America, has also been in, in some uh, political scandals as well. And while Mr. Trump failed to get through uh, his health care reforms, traders are also wondering if he can't get through his health care reforms, how can he get through stimulus packages in terms of infrastructure? How can he get through banking reform and changes to taxation as well? We have seen a bit more choppy trading uh, in, in the pound versus the US dollar, uh, but we have seen a pullback here and, and we, we could be looking at another kind of push higher. As we can see, the price here, as it was declining, positive momentum is declining as well. We're now going to be wondering, is this the, the point whereby we've had a pullback? Are we now going to set, set to take on and try and reach, reach, retake 131.25 and then head towards 132? Or if we move southbound, where are we going to head to? Obviously, the kind of 130 itself, we're trading just north of that. That's going to be the, the big kind of psychological import level to watch out for. But should we see pullbacks in the currency pair, we could be looking at support in around the 129.30 region. And then, and then of course, the 50-day moving average at 128.90. Turning our attention now to Euro Sterling. I'm asking a question here. Do I think the euro dollar will remain bullish and for and for how long? Before I go back to the euro sterling, I'll quickly pop on to the euro dollar. There's the old adage. It's a bit it's a bit cheesy, but um, I'll, I'll, it's uh, it's an old adage for a reason. The trend is your friend. Uh, it, often something if something if, if something rhymes like that, it can often doesn't 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 give the 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 weight uh, that that actually deserves, but. Uh, the momentum is clearly to the upside versus the US dollar in terms of actually looking at the chart. Like I mentioned last week, we hit a two-year high versus the, the euro versus the US dollar. It's something that 
it should not should not be ignored while you're hitting multi-year highs and a, and, a, and, a, and a trend is in a very clear and concise direction which it is it's very much moving to the upside it's a classic example of markets kind of pushing higher pulls back creates a new high higher low creates pushes higher creates a new high for the for the, for the year rest back not too dissimilar from where the previous high was creates support pushes higher it's been a very clear upward trend and i think we're very dangerous to uh, to to ignore that uh, in relation to how, how time frame, it's difficult to kind of put a t- an actual time frame on it. Um, Dow theory tells us that a trend is in is in is in place until effectively the, tr- the trend until effectively the trend you assume a trend is in place until you actually see signs on the chart that the trend is no longer in place. That would be large retracements or certain uh, bearish engulfings or something like that to suggest that the market could be looking around to turn around. We haven't seen any of those signs just yet. Um, at all on the euro versus the US dollar. So the trend, uh, the chart is telling us pointing to up, upward sign. We haven't seen any any indication to believe that otherwise. Also bearing in mind, you asked about the time frame. Bearing in mind, uh, August 2014, when Mario Draghi laid the groundwork for the bond buying scheme. It was announced at Jackson Hole that they were considering uh, monetary easing. And it wasn't on. And then it wasn't actually announced until Jan, the following January, and didn't actually become implemented until March. So there was over six, over six, there was a seven month period between Mario Draghi talking about uh, easy beginning the bond buying scheme and the bond buying scheme actually being introduced. So in terms of time frame, I wouldn't really like to put an actual time frame on, time frame on it. But we could be looking at a scenario for several months in that from now. We could always have speculation that the Euro, that the eurozone, or the European Central Bank, is talking about or is looking or is really seriously considering tapering the actual bond buying scheme. And from a fundamental point of view, while that has been talked about, traders are going to be looking at being long the euro, <coughs> particularly against the U.S. dollar, because the U.S. dollar is now looking like a scenario whereby political certainty with starting Mr. Trump. And also, some of the economic indicators haven't been too hot, so we could be looking at several more months uh, of a of a move higher in the uh, US US euro versus the US dollar. I'll just open the chart now of the euro versus the British pound. <coughs> Excuse me. The euro has been has also been gaining ground versus the pound. Um, once again, not as as a clear, but the last number of months uh, since April onwards, it's been a fairly clear upward trend in the uh, euro versus the sterling versus the pound. Once again, the there's very much uh, speculation that the ECB is going to talk about trimming its bond buying scheme. Also, if you look at some of the economic indicators out of the UK, particularly the most recent inflation numbers, much were you know indicative. Came in at 2.6 percent, really kind of taking the wind out of the sails of the hawks uh, of the Bank of England. So we're probably going to have a bit of a we're, not, we're probably not going to have as much kind of fear that the UK is going to t- tighten its um, stimulus package anytime soon. So we're looking at the trend here in the euro versus the sterling, pushing higher, buying the trends has been the name of the game in the last number of months. we will be looking towards 90 uh, in terms of actually upsize targets, and then of course beyond that. We'll then, we'll then be looking towards uh, 2016 levels. Beyond 90, we'll then be looking toward this price action here in around the kind of 90-50 region. And then, of course, beyond that, we'll, we'll be looking towards 91 in terms of upside, up, upward targets for the euro versus the sterling. Downside areas, should we see any, should we see any uh, pullbacks? We could be looking at support in around the kind of 89 region. Uh, I'll zoom in on a, a four-hour chart to kind of get an idea. In between uh, 89 and also 88, 80 has been a, has been a big level to watch out for for euro sterling, and then this price action here of 88.44. Uh, looking at the dollar versus, sorry, the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. I am aware that is the time is coming up on on, uh, on 10 to 1, so we have run over time on this uh, in terms of um, uh, currency pairs. Yes. Uh, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, and US dollar, Singapore and dollar, yes. So what I'll do is I will uh, do the uh, dollar yen now, and then I'll have a look at both the, the Kiwi Canadian and also the US Singaporean dollar, and then we'll look to wrap up the webinar itself.
if you look here it's been a fairly clear and concise downward move in the US dollar um, it's also reflected in the actual negative increase in negative momentum uh, that we that we witnessed here this is what I was trying to convey in, in previous examples of very different charts there's obviously no guarantee that the momentum is going to perfectly go from rising 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 to slightly declining into swing into negative and then of course the negative uh, momentum increases but this is a good example of here how while the while the US dollar Japanese yen was pushing lower we did see fairly steady negative momentum it pulls back out of that and you can see momentum then increasing it's kind of confirming the kind of upward move and then what we're seeing here to the downside is a fairly sharp and steady sell-off which is also reflected in the, in the increase in negative momentum the trend over the last uh, since well the, the trend over the last few uh, few sessions has been very much to the downside so we'll be looking towards 110.30 and then 110 itself and then below that 1109 for the for the, the down, downside targets any kind of moves higher uh, you, you to keep an eye out for, for the two day moving averages here at, uh, at 112 and then north of that 112.46 and then 113 for the dollar versus the Japanese yen uh, yeah I'll have a look now <clears throat> I'll have a look now at the two requests um, Kiwi dollar, Canadian dollar, and the US dollar, Singaporean dollar. Let's grab it now. It is, I'm going to be wrapping up the webinar in a few minutes time. So if there's any other uh, markets that haven't that you'd like me to cover, could you please just uh, shout that out and stick it in the box? Let's browsing through now. Currencies. New Zealand dollar. We are getting there. New Zealand dollar. What was the wrong one? New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. Here we, here we go. Found them out. Over the last number of years, the kind of big picture trend since mid-2015 to the mid-2017, so the last couple of years, we've been broadly kind of pushing higher on the New Zealand dollar versus the Canadian dollar. It's a bit, you would have liked to have seen this high here in June take out the high from the from late 2016 to kind of confirm that we're on an upward move. Where we're, 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 we're certainly are creating lower lows, but we haven't necessarily always created lower highs uh, looking at that particular currency pair. Uh, looking at zooming in on a bit, bit, bit more, a uh, bit more of a shorter term, um, shorter term chart here, we can see that once again, all the consolidation between the moving averages tells us that the market is kind of a bit unsure of, of where to go. We could be looking at a bit of a range bound move uh, for the time being. But as you can see um, from late, from the early June till, till now, the last six weeks, it's been very much in a downward trend. And while we saw the price action move lower, we saw an increase in negative momentum. And now we're seeing a slight push higher and negative momentum is very much dissipating. So we could be looking at a point whereby we could swing around to positive momentum and we could see prices push higher for the New Zealand dollar versus the Canadian dollar. And should we look at that, the, in order to kind of resume the upward trend that's been in place over the last couple of years, with broadly speaking lower lows at least, we would need to uh, be, be taking out these moving averages here one day moving average at 94.35, the 2 day moving average at 94.54, and then the 50 day moving average at 94.90, and then beyond that we'll be looking towards 96, and then of course we'll be looking for the uh, the, the June high of 97.59. But if we should we fail to kind of take out these moving averages here, and should we kind of resume the, the downward trend that has been in since early June? We would that take us back towards 92, the April low. You, you got to keep an eye out for the April low, which is, comes into play at uh, 91.72, and so, and then beyond below that again, we'd be then looking towards the, the 91 region for the, for that um, for the 
or the um, New Zealand dollar versus the Canadian dollar. I'll do the, just do the US dollar versus the Singaporean dollar last, and then we will be wrapping up the webinar. Well, straight away, I know that the United States has, hasn't been uh, particularly posting impressive economic indicators. So, as, if, uh, as you can visually, vi vi visually see here, it's been a classic example of a downward trend that we've seen in the dollar versus the Singaporean dollar, creating lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, all the way along. It's been a very clear and concise downward trend. Quite a bit of selling recently reflected in the in the uh, relatively high amount and increasingly high amount of negative momentum that we're seeing pushing towards the downside so the outlook is clearly very much at the downside for this particular currency pair we were looking towards the uh, the 135 region it's going to be the next uh, kind of big psychological number to keep an eye out for and then of course we'd be looking for just sub 134 we've got, a, we've got we do have some support here just sub 134 at 133.47. So keep keep an eye out to the downside of 134 and then 133.47 for the Singapore for the US dollar versus the Singaporean dollar. Uh, move to the upside, uh, 137 here. There is this 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 uh, push higher here, which comes into play at one just just north of 137 coincides with a with this the support here 137. And then beyond that, we're looking towards 138 and 138.16 uh, uh, in terms of resistance. But the trend, as we can see here throughout throughout 2017, has been clearly very much to the downside for that. Uh, there is a couple of one more things I do want do want to kind of show show you before we actually do kind of wrap up the actual webinar itself. Uh, I mentioned to you about uh, showing you where we have the we have the um, of where we have uh, very different news articles and, and uh, looking ahead, uh, week ahead on our website. But I'd also like to show you that we have another webinar tonight uh, performed, hosted by Trading with Precision. You can sign up here in the same place where you signed up uh, for this webinar. Uh, the Trader Development Program Part 4 Live uh, Trading Q&A. You can sign up for it here. And that's, that is tonight, uh, Monday 29th of July at 7.30 p.m. London time. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for tuning in to the CMC Markets weekly webinar with myself, market analyst David Madden. Uh, good luck and have a good trading week.